Hello and welcome. This is Playing Favorites. I'm Justin. I'm Paul. Hey, How's Paul. It going, Justin? How, how are you doing today? How's it going? Doing all right? I'm doing. I'm doing pretty well. Doing yeah, pretty well. I'm doing good. I've I got, got a. I've got, got a drink. Yeah, I, I got. I got three as well. I got three. Three drinks. Three. Three yeah. in the. Three in the works. Well, or, or, three... or, or two. Two and a half. Two and a half. Hmm. Two and a half. I needed to drink Very after nice. this. This. This beginning of this recording. This almost didn't happen. I had a flood tonight. You okay. know. Yeah, you were uh, dealing with some water issues. <laughs> your, your sump pump was blocked from doing its job. Um, we, as uh, anyone that listens to the show, we're from upstate New York. Uh, if you've been paying in the news, uh, we actually recorded this during a gigantic storm. So yep. um, the whole rain, state is been. the whole state's under under a rainstorm. It's not horrible. We're not really flooding. It just I had a a, 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 a sump that decided to not do its job. So we're all good. Give it a good we're all good too. We're all good. I got a beer. We're going to talk I'm about bored. some cool stuff because that's what we do here, right? We talk about cool stuff. Yes. Right? And what's been on our minds lately? DC fandom, man. It we that has been our mind. But just in case no one's ever been to the show before, just wanted to what we usually do in this show. <laughs> and just so you don't know what it, know what we do here, this is a podcast where we talk about our favorite <laughs> things across a variety of different topics like DC fandom and some pumps. Um, we usually pick a topic, uh, we do some little bit of research here, and then we go through and talk about our favorites. Today's episode, actually, we're, we're going to do it this time. Uh, we're going to talk about, we did this last last season, we did favorite movies of the decade. Well, we're going to do the 80s today. We're going to do the favorite right. movies of the 80s, and this is a two-part episode, so make sure you come back to next, not next week's, but next uh, two weeks from now. Um, mm-hmm. It's a bi-weekly show, if you didn't know. Um, but, uh, we're going to do the first five years, so 1980 through 1984. Uh, if you can't tell by my shirt, if you're watching our YouTube episode, you should go do that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this, there's a couple movies that are in that time range that I'm a big fan of, um, that we'll probably be talking about today, but we'll be getting to that in a little bit. Uh, when we like us, normally we like to kind of talk about something to kind of warm us up here and we're, we're picking kind of a more kind of current topic not the 80s but there's some there's some 80s references in this topic a little bit it's uh, yeah, these it. are, this is a crazy nostalgia trip here for dc fandom yes very exciting stuff here being revealed lots of trailers right trailers uh, uh, galore oh geez, so yeah, that's great what was the what was the first one you saw? Because I mean, they they came out, and I, I'm not even sure the order because I feel like I caught them randomly throughout the day. Well, the DC fandom is is pretty much a, a, a long live stream of content of just DC announcements. I mean, they had other things that I maybe missed too. There's a lot of things like talking about all the TV shows and and just cut different 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 comics that are coming out and. And, but 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 the main things are usually for video, the big video game announcements, and they seem kind of like in the movies that are coming out and things like that. So it gets started off with the video games, though more so, um, and then it kind of sprinkled in some of the movies that are kind of early in development. Um, I don't know the exact order that they came out either. I kind of saw them throughout the day, but the first two that I saw were the video game was uh, Gotham Knights and Suicide yes. Squad. Which yes. both looked awesome. I'll be happy. I have to say, like I was yes. extremely excited by both of those. I cannot believe that they're they're going to do the Court of Owls. Like that's so cool. Like we we were just kind of. I remember not terribly long ago, maybe last season, we were talking about like, oh, that that would be like the next thing that they could do, and so cool that they're following through with that storyline and that it looks so legit too. Mm-hmm. I mean, the artwork in that book was so vivid. It was such a like a interesting looking villain the the main like owl dude that he fights several times Mm -hmm. um and they haven't really like revealed him yet i I don't think so it's um it's exciting to see like what they're going to do and like who can you be in this game it seems like you can be everybody well it's it's gonna be like uh it's you're pretty much the bat family so that's that's you you probably know the core owl more than i do i kind of get glimpses by just the show um, like Robin, like the younger Tim Drake, Robin, yep. Dick Grayson will be there. Red Hood, it looks like Batgirl. Yep. Um, 
Those are the four you pick. Those are the four players. Okay. So they Those did. They them. they they announced this last DC fandom. It was supposed to come out this year, um, but it got delayed. So they've given gameplay footage of this like a year ago, and the Court of Owls was sort of teased in the last year's presentation. This is the first like story trailer we've gotten to give like the ambiance exactly. of the of the of the whole thing. Um, I love the little the, the 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 reference of Penguin too. Like I like his role. At least it looked like Penguin that was in there. I think. Yeah, I think that was Penguin. I know he, they've made him less ugly since the the Arkham games. You remember, like the yeah. the first one. Yeah. He's like disgusting, and they've made him less and less gross. But now uh, this going on. this is this Gotham Knights is completely out of the uh, the Gotham universe. It's not it's not the same universe Correct. as. Uh, uh, the Arkham games, excuse me, the Ga- Arkham games. That's what I meant to say. The Arkham series. It's yeah. just yeah, this is still in the Arkham series uh, of uh, storylines. So Bruce Wayne is technically no. Or, this or is Batman. this is separate. This is separate. It's not. Oh, oh, it's not oh. in the Arkham. It's not related at all. Really? Yeah. So this is made oh. by this. This is made the developer that made the Origin game. So it's not Rocksteady. Oh, okay, the WB. Yeah, the Warner Brothers game there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, um, I mean, so... Which was actually good. I feel like people don't give that game credit because people, like, said the story wasn't great. Um, It actually is really good, and the gameplay is pretty decent. It's very similar to the Arkham. Yeah, I I missed out on the Origin game myself, but I I am excited to see what this one is because I like the story and the elements and stuff. Now... Suicide yeah. Squad is made by Rocksteady and is in the Arkham universe. They even reference that a little bit in the yeah. beginning of the trailer. Like they show a scene that's like a reference of the original games. Like it's like it's kind of cool. Like they have them driving in Arkham and stuff like that. But I am loving Suicide Squad. I mean, I kind of just not spend too much time on um, Gotham Knights. But and I, I want just want to say one thing about Suicide Squad. Uh, Walker. I, I the first time I saw her, I'm like, who do I know her from? Who is that? And why does yeah. she look so familiar? She's your Jedi Master in Jedi Fallen Order. It's the exact same actress. I'm like, oh, she looks... Really... The, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. She looked just like her. She yeah. looks exactly like, like her. I'm like, that's the first time I've ever seen like a like a character, sort of re, like a, an actor, a video game actor being like, you know, CGI'd. That wasn't yeah, like a like big name actor. actor yeah. yeah, it's not like I've seen that actress in other things a lot. Like I'm sure she's been in other things. I just don't know of her. I only know of her as, and I can't believe I don't remember her name. But the, your master here, here from uh, from Jedi Seer. Fall. is it Seer? Yeah. Is that her name? Um, from Jedi Fallen Order, and like I just like seeing her in this game. Like, oh, that's that's the same actress, and it's weird. Like only knowing her in CGI form. You know what I mean? Like, I know, right? <laughs> being her in real life, like, oh, okay. Like, that was pretty good CGI. Like, that got you. <laughs> oh, it's a good likeness uh, of her. Uh, and, I, and it looks even better seeing it on the PS5, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you, you, you're you really on, a, like, a Suicide Squad uptick here. Like, you really, it seems like you liked uh, James Gunn's version. I, yeah. I like, I like, uh, I liked it. I wasn't like I wouldn't rave about it like some people. Like I, I'm not like this. Like oh, this is save the save the whole series. Like give me more of it. Like I, I, I had fun. I had fun with it. Let's put the, the movie well, itself. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it kind of reminded the way people are reacting to it and the way you're describing it reminds me of how people describe Guardians of the Galaxy when it first came out. It's like yeah, it was low stakes, but it was fun and it was a you know it was a good story. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really. You know, it didn't wow me, but it was you know decent. And I just people ex- forget just like how like there are some mediocre you know middling movies in the Marvel universe. There's a lot of those. Yeah, <laughs> I just like the, just like, I just like the trailer for Suicide cool. Squad. I don't know what the gameplay is quite yet. That's the only thing I'm a little concerned about because I heard it had to do with a lot with shooting. And there, the last time Rock City made a game that had to do with uh, shooting a lot was a tank. So I love tanks. Not really. <laughs> so maybe they'll, all drive, maybe they'll all of a sudden like get into little tanks. And well, start they did show the they, they did show the Batmobile driving around at one point, so I was a little little, <laughs> little concerned. <laughs> but I just like the trailer, I like the music choice, and just like the the way they cut the trailer. It was fun, mm-hmm. you know. Like it was, I thought the humor was good, and 
Um, I, it's funny how I can see different variations of King Shark and still get excited. Like, I've seen so many different <laughs> versions of him. Um, well, he's all of a sudden super popular now because of the movie. Like, he's become, like, this uh, sort of cultural phenomenon people know who well, King Shark is. even before the movie... I, the, he's the, in the Harley Quinn that's, show that's now, where, right? that's my That's my little uh, nod to that. Like, I kind of got into this whole Harley Quinn thing that, that from the Harley Quinn show. Like, I'm all about, like, King Shark and... Because the show is great. They make King Shark just seem like a really polite hacker dude. Like, he's just, like, a coffee shop hacking computer nerd. It's, like, really kind of hilarious, to be quite honest. <laughs> and they did show a trailer for the season three, which is supposedly coming out next year, and that I was really excited about, so. Right. Um, but the big thing, I don't want to spend a ton of time, I guess, on this, is the movies that they showcased, uh, Batman meaning the bone thing, but was there a few other, besides Batman, we touch on that, like, did you see much about, like, the other, the other ones that they showcased at all? What did you think of the the teaser for uh, Black Adam there? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. It wasn't much. To, like, it wasn't much to go on. Yeah, I it's mean, not like like why are they making a Black Adam movie? Like that's it's still like I know that Dwayne Johnson looks like him, but I don't like other than that. It's like there's no reason to make this movie. Like make him the villain in a shazam movie or something but well black adam in comic book wise i did a little research i don't really know a lot about black adam and i guess he becomes sort of more of an anti-hero later on like he's not always a villain so like like i i didn't realize that black adam and shazam were used to used to be marvel characters like i didn't know any of that stuff like shazam used to be captain marvel and then was like bought out or something and became shazam like it's so weird and I don't then, know how the switch happened, but yeah, I remember hearing that those were Marvel owned a di- he, they our Marvel used to own different comic book companies, I guess, and then DC bought the rights to that one company that made Captain Marvel, and then but then they took it, but they didn't get to keep the name, I guess, so they just kept the character and then changed the name. That's from my understanding. But anyways, regardless, like I don't think there was much to go. I, I like the the actors that are in it. Like Pierce Brosnan's in it. I don't know who Doctor Fate is, but like <laughs> it's kind of cool that he's in there. I mean, Doctor Fate is like he's one of those DC characters like who's always in the background of like big team up books. So any any Justice League book, any like I have a bunch of these old like Justice League West Coast, Justice League of America, like all these old ones. <laughs> Where he's there, and he's like a decent character, but you don't get like I, I feel like uh, I never knew too much about him. Uh, but I mean, he's interesting looking, and I'm sure he's like uh, <laughs> sort of a Doctor Strange-ish type of character for them. Now, did you watch the whole like like preview they did where it shows um, Dwayne Johnson in in the because the the fandom is actually a thing if they stand in this virtual dome. I don't know if you've yeah. seen this or not, like the dome that they actually stay, like they just had, like the actor just stand inside of a dome and it's all CGI and that's like the place they have their conferences is in this virtual dome. Yeah. It's really yeah. ridiculous. I've seen pictures. <laughs> I've got to actually. But jo- when Dwayne Johnson announces this clip, it's, it's so like, I don't know, I found it really funny. Like he talks like he's like giving a presidential speech. The way he like presents himself. He's like, really? he's like, hello, I'm, I'm here. Welcome to the fan. Like he's just so like, like very like posture, like super like like standing up nice and straight. And it's like this is a, this is the, this is the role that I is destined to play. And it's, it, I could never have passed it. It's like he, the way he like talks about it. It's just so prim and proper and like just. I, it's I don't know what I don't know how to describe it. Like it's like so charismatic. It, it's just so weird because it's it's the Rock. You know, it's like. <laughs> But, um, he's a smart. He's a he's a pretty savvy guy. I don't know. You know, yeah, he he's is. been around for a while, and so many other wrestlers who tried to be actors were. Uh, it's like people, kids don't even know that he was a wrestler at this point. You know, there, yeah. there are people that just associate him with family friendly, or, or sometimes like high action movies like this. So, no, like. Uh, if he's doing something, it's probably interesting, at least a little bit. Yeah, I, um, I mean, he does pick some really weird movies, though, too. Like, he does have, a, like, a like a lot of movies that he does, like, 
he picks like movies like Rampage or like Skyline or like you know like this random like it's kind of like the Samuel Jackson of action stars too it's like you know like Samuel Jackson will pick random movies too like Snakes on a Plane or like you know things like that like he does pick a lot of like just I don't know easy to make quick quick quickie like movies yeah to, to, to money making movie yeah yeah just get get some money. Fast, like but uh, no, I, I I'd be curious to learn more about it. I feel like that one scene doesn't really sell me on the idea. Okay, you know, um, I didn't really see too much about Shazam. Uh, I think it's weird that Helen Moran, Helen Mirren is the main villain in that movie. I think it's Helen Mirren. That's her name. Helen Mirren. Yeah, she's Helen Mirren. Villain? Yeah, she's the main villain. No idea who which, who she would be. But as you say, Helen Mirren, I, I think she would make a perfect uh, Madam Web from Spider Man if they ever did oh. that particular character. Um, Helen Mirren would be like the perfect casting for that. She's Madam she? Web. She's, she joins. She sits in a in a web and and tells the future. Sometimes she kidnaps Peter and tells him, you know, like, oh, you got to do this. You you have to go on this quest for me. She's playing um, Hespera. Hespera. Hes- the... H- Hespera, the villainous daughter of the god Atlas. Okay. It had to be some kind of <laughs> mythological thing. The name. <laughs> Hespera. Have you seen Shazam? Have you watched that movie? No. No, I didn't watch it. it. Oddly enough, like I heard it, it was fun. Yeah, Amber Amber like kinda like just forced me to watch it because like, I really she's like, I really want to watch this movie. I'm like all right, I guess I'll, you owe me a movie, a different Dead Night or something like that. I don't know. I wanted to watch like Birds of Prey. I didn't. We didn't have much options. I'm like, oh, I kind of wanted to see that. Yeah. I was curious. Well, I heard. I heard it's one of the better DC movies, to be quite honest. And it's got you and McGregor, so I was willing to give it a shot. But anyway, I hadn't seen it yet. So I watched Shazam. It felt like a '90s superhero movie. Like it just felt like it just kind of felt like that, like like a '90s cheesy superhero movie. Like, what's a good example? Like 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 The Shadow or like. Uh, what's that movie? Uh, fan? What's that? Phantasm? There's like a like a the oh, Phantom. Oh, the Phantom. The Phantom. Like it yes. just. Like, I oh never watched God. the. That's I never cool. watched the Phantom, but I've seen trailers for the Phantom. It was so, huge. You remember it? Yeah. I remember the all the all the talk of the Phantom. Yeah, when they first started making comic book movies, but they were comic book characters from like the 1890s and 1920s. Yeah, because they're you know, ma- the Phantom the, who had been like a serial for like years. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, they, 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 it was. It just made me think of that kind of vibe. But like, it, it was just fun. It, it wasn't taking itself too seriously. It was cheesy, but yet it was good. Like I couldn't. Like, like the, I had a hard time finding. Like I would change this thing about the movie. Like it wasn't anything I would change because it was doing what it I needed. Like what it be, needed and wanted to do. You know. I feel like I'd be interested. I would probably watch that. And I feel like they didn't market that movie well at all. I feel like I, I don't know why. Like they they shouldn't have had no problem getting people into the theaters to watch that movie. But for some reason, I feel like it didn't it didn't do great because it did enough to get a sequel. So it did something right, I guess. I mean, I can't imagine it being a high budget film for what they did, how they did it though. So no. you know, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think it did okay in the theater. I don't think it was not I don't think it was meant to be like a crazy crazy blockbuster i think it was timing of when it was released too i think it came out at a weird time but um it felt like, it, like i didn't hear enough about it like i knew it was coming out but i felt like it was the kind of movie that you could have marketed to a very general audience you yeah know what i mean i just think i don't think it was generated it was it was it was directed towards like kids a little bit more like middle schoolers mm-hmm. high school maybe a little like young high schooler where okay. like it and it, it, it's it's not a scare a character that speaks to you or me. I don't think it's like I've always I've been clamoring for a Shazam movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I it, it I didn't see much else. But I, as far as uh, Black Adam didn't really care. But the the other the other two big ones were the Flash, which is very very small amount of the Flash that we saw. Did you see the yeah, but a lot of stuff read into it. You know. Yes, yeah, so I mean uh, the big the big almost reveal of what's under that tarp. So what do you think is well, under there? Well, of course it's the Batmobile, duh. Well, which one? 
It's it's well, it's, he's in he's in he's in Michael Keaton's universe, so it's got to be that one. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what other one could it be? I mean, well, I don't know. They like don't, haven't you seen all these stupid articles after the fandom saying like, you know, like what do you think this could possibly be? Could it be the Michael Keaton one? It's like yeah, duh. Like there's nothing else. Well, I mean, be. the only other one it could be that would look kind of like that shape would be maybe maybe Val Kilmer. Yeah, like maybe Batman yeah. Forever, which. Technically, it's the same sort of universe in theory. Like it's supposed to be the same universe as the Michael Keaton universe. It's supposed to be. I think it, that was the intent. Yeah, that was the plan because they had the same Alfred, you know. But like with this whole multiverse thing that they're, that's like the new fad in movie making now. It's like yeah, they could, we could correct <laughs> the mistakes of the past and all the weird uh, <laughs> people who own different you know properties and made shitty movies out of them. We can unite them all together. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, great, one person bought them all, and now you can make it a multiverse. <laughs> not, well, D- DC, though, it's only, it's, all, it's only owned by owner, Warner Brothers, so I'm not sure. They're just taking all their property they already own, right? Just to yes, mesh them yes. together? Yes, I'm oversimplifying it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they're just they're just fixing the Flash's issues from, you know, the, the, the sure. wonderful Justice League movie, which was, you know, improved upon with... Yeah, it was a decent uh, Zack Snyder movie. <laughs> I think that's the best compliment I yeah, can give. Yeah, that's, that's, that's best. It's it could be it the best. It was a good Zack Snyder movie. It was probably the best Zack Snyder movie. I'll give it that. You know what? I would agree with that too, Justin. Because I mean, his range is has really been shit to fucking <laughs> shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, little, that's, a, that's a little harsh, but okay. <laughs> it's a little harsh. It's and, harsh, I know. But it's kind of true. I think I think the cream of the crop, we'll just end it here and then go take a break, is the Batman trailer. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty fun to see. That was great. So such a weird version. I'm 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 intrigued by this role like the way this is going, this this universe, the way the Riddler looks, you know, the the type of Batman this is. So, what do you think? It, it's it's it, to me. It's like I've watched the trailer many times because I'm just like, it, it's a good trailer. It gives you just enough information, but not enough. You know, it's like you try to pull as much as you can out of it. And like Justin, there was there was a time when you made fun of me for watching DC trailers over and over and over again. So just be careful. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> I didn't make fun of you. I made fun of you the fact that you thought they were that you were like excited for the movie. I wasn't kidding. Yes. Just like um, the one with uh, what's his name, uh, Doomsday. Doomsday. In it. <laughs> oh, but well, please go on. Go I, I, on. I, the one I made, I thought was Doomsday. I was a little bit more understanding. It's Suicide Squad that I just couldn't see what you were saying at all. <laughs> yeah. nor, 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 nor did you just, I don't I think you just made it up in your head. <laughs> no, I mean, they, 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 they cut a really good trailer and then the movie itself was like totally <laughs> Hash, terrible. Like, they, <laughs> it was, it, it actually ruined the trailer once you saw the movie. Then you watch the trailer, you're like, ah, god damn it, that is, was terrible. Is there like, there's a hashtag David, I think David Iyer is the director. I guess there's a really good cut for that movie too. Is there? Like is he, there really he, a he, better cut? He was saying like they the, the the studio messed up that movie too or something like that. Like like there was our but he was saying all this stuff when Zack Sander was getting his release, so it could be just like feeding off the whatever. Yeah, that that that's exactly what I thought when I heard that because I remember hearing that David uh, Ayers guy saying that like oh yeah I've got a better cut version of. Of Suicide Squad as well. It's like, mm, no, no, you don't. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, I don't know. Well, like, who knows? <laughs> probably deleted a couple scenes, and they should stay deleted. And in fact, most of that movie should be deleted. <laughs> Woof. Yes, I was suckered. I was suckered into it, Justin. I'm just, I'm just warning you to don't, to just don't get your hopes up too high. I'm just. DC. I'm just you know, saying it was a well you. well made trailer. That's all I'm saying. But no, but like, I I, I, I don't get I get hyped up, but I, I go to see a movie that I think I mean I don't know. I'm gonna see this movie. This true this yeah. trailer gave me enough to give me hope and give me excitement. 
you know, like, I don't know what it's going to be, but I, I can't see a, a way this movie would fall flat, I guess. It, it looks, uh-huh. it has what I like about film. It has really good visual style that is grounded yep. like the Nolan movies, right? It looks it looks like a realistic city, but it really does have this ble- vibe of, like, Tim Burton's Gotham a little bit, like that dark and... But very then, dark, very rainy, all the time. So it has, like, this kind of weird blend of, like, realism... But yet that painterly comic booky color, like you got to splash of color. There's some really really cool shots in that in that trailer of him doing. But then you have a really active Batman, not the stiff Batman you get from the the Keaton and the Val Kilmer days, or like no, it, it, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's just like it's it's very much um, when you have uh, a young a young Batman like fighting for the first time. You know, and like fighting his first like super villain, or, or you know, like his first ri- like real rival uh, in his rogues gallery. Uh, it's it's definitely that same vibe of, of like n- almost like noir Batman. So it's it's Frank Miller, you know, like year one Batman, as well as uh, uh, what do you call it? The um, what's the other Frank, the Dark Knight. Um, what was the, the other the, Frank? The Miller Dark Knight one? Returns. No, not that one. Killing no, Joe? No, I'm just thinking of year one. Just the well, this is based. This one. is this is a fish. This is based on year one. I mean, that's been yeah. So like that's the the art style that like kind of being mimicked is the Frank Miller stuff, which coincidentally Zack Snyder has also done, which we were just talking about. It's really funny, but but I, I no, it's good stuff. I'm I'm excited. So we'll we'll leave it at that. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about DC fandom, but let's talk about some what well, we came here to talk about today. <laughs> some movies that were that that helped make these movies that are today. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> helped make them. Yes, but um, we'll take a quick, quick break and we will come back with our favorites of the nineteen eighties. Welcome back. All right, Justin. I'm, I'm ready to get started here on these movies. Are we, are we ready to get going? Yeah, no, we're out of the fandom. We're out of it. We're gone. <laughs> <laughs> We've left it behind. Close the virtual door <laughs> behind us. All right, Justin. Let's go with 1980. 1980. What, 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 can you tell me about the year 1980? I don't know. Not many movies came out that are of any importance whatsoever. <laughs> no. We weren't born, so, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, who cares about that? Who cares about that year? Um... Mm-hmm. No, this is this is obviously like I, I mean I'm just gonna say it right now. We usually pick our favorites of the first five years. It's yep. in this year. This is my favorite year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is the best. <laughs> but let's do the before yes. before we, people can even guess what this is. If you don't know what came out in 1980 and you're not looking at my T-shirt again, check our YouTube channel. Like subscribe. Click the bell. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure if you're a, a long-time <laughs> listener, you already know what it is. <laughs> but let's just talk about let's just talk about the, the what, what was the most popular movie of the year. Let's let's do that, right? Let's just, let's talk that through. Okay. Um, so let's, okay. So you the number one, highest grossing. I, I got it for you. I got it right here. I'm ready to go. I, oh. I want to say this. Let me say it. this is mine. I, I want to hear it. <laughs> number one grossing movie of 1980: The Empire Strikes Back. That's right. I wonder. That's right. Is that my favorite? Most likely, yes. Of course, it is. I don't know. You, you, you have. It has some competition. It has it, some competition. It does, it, there is some really good movies this year. I have to say, like, there's some good stuff. But top five I, for I, that I, year. Yeah. Top five for that year. I'll just give the top five, and we can go on. Go for it. Empire Strikes Back, uh, nine to five. I have no idea what this movie is. Uh, Stir crazy airplane. Um, any which way you can. Man, I like. The the rankings of like 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 but like what what movies made back then are so weird compared to nowadays. Yeah, what are, are you are you looking at the gross of how much these movies made? Like yeah. it's insane. <laughs> yeah, so. Empires was what two hundred thirty nine million three hundred thousand dollars. It's like they're actually counting three hundred thousand dollars. Where like movies these days are like multi million dollar deals. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah, I got for U.S. domestic. Is one hundred eighty-one thousand, one hundred eighty-one million, three hundred seventy-nine thousand 
six oh, gross. Six hundred forty. Okay. And then I got for worldwide gross, according to Wikipedia, five hundred thirty-eight million three hundred seventy-five thousand. Unless that's in, that's got to be for just that year, right? It, yeah, and I'm just looking at American, uh, like what what it made in the country. I okay. just I just realized the the Wikipedia page I'm checking as well, Justin, is only <laughs> uh, how much it made in the United States, not oh, worldwide. Yeah, okay, but that's that's I mean all the other ones, yeah, they're they're kind of lower. Like airplane is like eighty three million four hundred fifty three thousand. That's still a lot of money. You think about nineteen eighty. That's 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 a lot. Like in comparison, yes. you know, I mean, like I don't know what the budgets for these films were. I mean. Um, but that's still, still something to think about. But yeah, again, I have no, I only know one other movie in this top five that I'm saying. So I have no idea what nine to five is, stir crazy is, or any which way you can. I have no clue what those movies are. Nine to five is that Dolly Parton movie. Um, and Lily Tomlin is in it as well. I don't know what it's about. I think they're just like working women in the, like in the office culture of New York city. And it's like them fighting against the man. Yeah, I pretty see sure three, that's what three, the movie three is. Three women and a guy that looks really annoyed. That's what I see. I think... Oh, it's Jane Fonda. <laughs> is that the, is that the Jane, movie poster? Jane, Jane Fonda in that too. Oh, okay. So Lily Tomlin is she in there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Stir crazy, yeah. no clue. Oh, oh my god, wait, is that? I'm looking at the picture of Stir Sydney? Crazy, and I don't understand. Yeah, it's got Gene Wilde. And they're in like Richard a, Pryor. They're in like a bird suit or something. Yeah, they're they're. <laughs> dress up as woodpeckers and get mm. framed for robbing a bank and when they discover <laughs> that prison life is for the birds they go stir crazy <laughs> so it's, somehow I, I, I hope that that's not what the premise of this movie is and that it's just a big joke but someone really tells me that's what the premise of the movie is and, and, and any which way you can is a Clint, Clint Eastwood movie sounds like a romantic comedy I did mm. not I would not imagine it being a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> well, I'm just reading what the when I read what the thing. It's like uh, it's just a this is a sequel. Oh, this is a sequel to Every Which Way But Loose. Oh, the the 1970 hit comedy. Just so you know, <laughs> this film is a sequel to it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Okay. Anyways, those aren't the movies that we're talking about today at all. <laughs> no, no. So, Paul, so Justin, since, 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 since Empire Strikes Back, I have, a, I, have a, I have a couple other ones from 1980 that I would talk about. But what is your? Yeah, I mean, what is your fa- is your favorite movie Empire Strikes Back too, or did you have something else? Are you going to be? Different? No, it's The Shining. Yeah. 1980 yeah. is The Shining. Yeah. Is Stanley Kubrick's Shining, which was like one of those movies that scared me on so many levels. It, it, it was such like a good film. First of all, like you're actually watching this like piece of art. And it's just like crazy, uh, the vivid kind of nightmarish quality it, it really has. Uh, I'll just say that that you know the part I'm talking about. I mean, before I even start describing it, like the scariest part to me. But I, is it do you the, remember? Is it the bear? It's the bear. Is it the and bear? as we're saying this, my my cat is going nuts upstairs, <laughs> like like trampling back and forth, and I'm like, it's the bear. I don't understand why the bear scares you so much. It's just so it's so unsettling. It's just, it's just the way it happens because Shirley Duvall's character, she's running up the stairs after just seeing the um, elevator open up with blood come out of it. Yeah, and she's running up the stairs, and like that's what she sees down the hall. It's just this weird. It's, it's it, the bare face is so bizarre too, and it, it just you, you, g- you, gave me the heebie-jeebies. You, get, you you're you're thrown so many like intense moments in that flat, mm-hmm. fast amount of time, right? Like, I mean, I'm. Yep. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I've watched it a good good few months, few times. It's, it's a really I good get, scene. Like, like just I get it. it's crazy. hard. It's hard not to pick that movie. Empire just being in 1980, just kind of mm-hmm. like. I'm sorry. Like it's I a have great to... movie too. Yeah, like as like... a movie, it's a great movie too. Like it's not, you know, saying anything bad about yeah, Empire Strikes just... Back. It's but no, Shining, Shining is a phenomenal movie. I, I, oh man, I, I been, I think about that movie a lot because it's just like it is so well. Put. It's funny because like, you didn't, didn't like um, uh, whoever the the author is, Stephen King. Like he didn't yeah. like that version, right? Like he didn't yeah. like what Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick did with that movie at all. Correct. He, he took, did not. He took a lot and, of and, and, it, and it 
and it motivated him to get that miniseries produced on USA of, uh, <laughs> of The Shining, where instead of chasing the family with an axe in a frozen, you know, wasteland, it's chasing the fa- the family with like a croquet mallet in a frozen wasteland. Like those are the important changes that needed to be made mm-hmm. to the movie, you know. And they they the the whole Danny thing and you know the the kid talking to himself. I don't know. Movies are movies and books are books. Just because a yeah. movie is, you know, based on a book doesn't mean it's got to be exactly what happens in a book. Well, yeah. I mean, um, like, you can't, like, reading it is a different experience than watching. I mean, if you're going to very do, different experience. do things exactly what happens in a book, and it might not be good for the visual experience, right? Yep. <clears throat> it's, it's, a different, yep. it's a different language. But no, Shining is definitely uh, phenomenal. And... No, it's great. It's a great movie. Also, I, I just got to throw this in there um, just to gross you out for a minute. Uh, the, the the movie Cannibal Holocaust is uh, also came out this year, Don't know what that is. which is basically like a uh, it's it's not a, meant to be a horror movie. It's it's actually meant to be like a like it's almost like a documentary, uh, but it's about like it, it's just like gore porn basically and Hmm. it's just crazy that they got away with making a movie like that and that it's um it's actually saying something about movie making it's actually like commenting on filmmaking and the industry so Hmm. and and hollywood and all that so there's like that layer of it to it so it's like gore movie and social commentary at the same time it's like okay didn't expect that did not know but that's that cannibal holocaust for I, you. I want to give a shout out um this isn't my favorite in the series but obviously it started the series uh friday the 13th when I, when oh that's I shout, true i want to shout that out there mm-hmm. awesome twist at the end obviously yes Pro- it's probably yes. the i mean if, I, I don't remember watching the first one that much you know it's like i i, I kind of saw it here and there but i remember that was probably the better made movie out of all of them like it was mm-hmm. a better film, right? It was a better like put together movie, and then it got. It like, actually had like a cinematographer, you know, <laughs> like an actual like style, you know. Yeah, like it, this it, is what it was. This story. is the story we're trying to tell, and this is you know the visual sense we want to evoke. And then the second the, the the guy who comes in for the sequel is like, yeah, let's do it like the first movie, you know, just like except <laughs> let's, let's just keep the same formula. Let's just put a bag over Jason's head and have everyone... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why a burlap sack? The hockey know. mask was such a cool upgrade. Now, good job. Like, Whoever made three, yeah. three. Whoever made three, great. You know, it's like you know, good job. Good on you. You know, <laughs> that's a good one to shout there out. Wasn't, right there wasn't there wasn't a there wasn't any like horror movies before that except for Michael Myers, right? For except for Halloween, like that kind of like slasher, like that kind of slasher movie. Yeah, Halloween. I mean. Alien, maybe around this that, time. It wasn't really a, the same vibe. I mean, no, it's it's, it's horror ish. Yeah, but it's not, a sla- it's not a slasher movie. It's not like you know, no, that's not, that's true. It's not like that's guy true. coming to kill you kind of thing. Like like in Halloween, no. really, not many people die. Oh, no, Nightmare really... on Elm Street is the only other one that didn't come out yet. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that later. later. But yeah, this is really the beginning of that era, I guess. That's why I shouted. That's out. funny to think about. Or what about like Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh yeah, that's right. I think and, like that those kinds of uh, hobo with a shotgun or whatever. Well, that was like a few years before this, right? That was seventies. Yeah, yeah, seventies. Yeah. That was starting around those. Very seventies. Um. All right. Well, Ooh. I'd find another shout out. But Empire Strikes Back. I mean, what what can I say about it? Like, what else do I need to talk about? It's a great movie. If you don't. If you've never seen it. If you've never watched Star Wars, you probably never will. Because why haven't you yet? (laughs) Like, that's the question I have. If you like Star Wars and haven't seen this movie, like, what? (laughs) What is is wrong with you? What are you doing here? (laughs) Like, the one thing I will say, because, you know, Empire Strikes Back has been a favorite, or has been a reference to a favorite of mine a few times, but, like, the thing as far as a film goes, like, Irving Kirshner is... I would say probably one of the better direct, probably the best director of all of Star Wars. I'm going to give it that. Yeah. You know, yeah. George Lucas is probably a big input on what's going on in the film, but like Irving Kushner 
made this the special movie that it is. It was a good team together. The people yeah. that made this movie. It was a really good team of people. Yeah. No, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. But um, that's all I'll say on that. Um, go. And I would watch. I would rather watch your favorite um, more often than my Moon favorite. Shining. My favorite is like a. It's like this is a piece of art that I can look at once in a blue moon. Yeah. I, it's not like I'm popping this in. Like, oh man. Yeah. Ah, time to unwind with some The Shining. You yeah, know, it's not really any scary scenes in uh, in Empire Strikes Back like a bear. Um, mm-hmm. I don't no, know, a space no, slug, not a man maybe, in a bear maybe, maybe a space slug or a space worm. <laughs> it's kind of scary. It's a minox. It's a, it's scary it's a min- minox are kind of. Scary. Oh, the minox are scarier mm. than uh, than the giant space worm. <laughs> it's more. It's more. It's more Carrie Fisher's scream when she sees it. That like freaks me out sometimes because it's just so quiet and it's just like. But it's just like it's so yep. like so it's so majestic when you first see the minox. It's like. I know. Like, why does she scream at that? It's just like a. And then when it sucks the glass, <laughs> it's like. Pah! <laughs> My... You're absolutely right. Her reaction should have been flipped for that. Like when she sees it just like coast by, you know, like gliding on the aerials, you know, <laughs> just going by. She's just like, bah! but then when this thing is like sucker face on the glass, she's like, huh, <laughs> like looking straight at it. Like what the hell is with this woman? <laughs> Something's wrong with Princess Leia. <laughs> Uh, she's not getting a lot of air. She's not getting a lot of oxygen. You know, they're in a they're in a space. They're inside of a belly of a space. Oh, truck. <laughs> and they have their little gas masks for yeah. for oxygen. <laughs> it doesn't so feel, weird. It's just such a weird doesn't like, feel like interlude. It doesn't feel like rock. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of moisture. Mikey. There's a lot of moisture yeah. in this cave. Feels like a feels like a giant taste bud is what it feels like. <laughs> Oh god, such a good scene. I love it. It's good. Yes. I love the asteroid. Much m- much more levity there than uh, than my favorite. So yes, let's let, let, let's mean, walk some, away there, from nineteen eighty. There's, there's some bear. There's some levity in the bear. I mean, they look like they're having a good time. That's all, that's all I can say. Does that really look like a good time? <laughs> they see the bears. I mean, come on. What's the bear doing to the guy? I mean, they're both having a good time. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. People who are having a good time usually smile. <laughs> They weren't smiling. Well, they were caught. Like, would you smile if you got caught by screaming lady? Oh my god! Please stop! Please stop uh, <laughs> rationalizing the costumed bear fellatio scene from The Shining. <laughs> let's let's just leave it alone and All talk right. about 1981. All right, we'll move on to 1981. <laughs> we'll let the bear, we'll let the bear and the I don't know the, the, the hotel guests. I don't know. Anyway, I know I know your answer for 1981. Oh, you do, do you? Uh, maybe, unless I'm, unless I'm completely... There's a lot of good movies, 1981. I only, wrote, you. I only wrote down three. I couldn't find that many, but... I, I Aside from, like, what was the highest grossing, I, I came up with two... Well, no, all three of mine are not in the highest grossing. What, what, is, that, what is the highest grossing for 1981? Raiders of the Lost Ark, Justin. Mm. Raiders of the Lost Ark. I missed those. Ones. And coming in at number two, surprisingly... On Golden Pond with Peter Fonda. I, I remember that movie, but I don't know anything about it. Other than it's like an old man and like a little kid. And he teaches the little kid, I think. That's the premise. There you go. On Golden Pond. <laughs> <I> love... <laughs> There's a scene where he picks blueberries. Oh, I don't know this movie at all. And then Superman 2. That's one of your favorite movies. Uh, no, I, I mean, I like to. But you enjoyed that one. I like three. Especially. Three is the one that I really got. Oh, like. three. three was we were oh, with, Richard, right. with Richard Pryor and like the, the robot thing. Like I don't know, he gets like in the robot. Well, we'll get to that year, I guess. But like you know, he gets into like the robot chamber. He turns into like a robot. It's so mm-hmm. creepy. Uh, but yeah, two was fine. Well, the... I don't remember two that much, to be quite honest. I mean, it was odd. That was um, in the three spot, and uh, Arthur with um. What's his name? Dudley Moore. Okay. It's a comedy movie. Like that's a character he's Dudley Moore was known to play, which is basically drunk Dudley Moore, I believe, is what Arthur is. So they just like let him be drunk on set, and they made a movie about it. That's Arthur. Uh, also, Stripes with Bill Murray. Yeah, his, that's at number beginning, five. Beginning of his movie career. What do you think? I, I, I guess. Guess. no. Was that Caddyshack or no? It's an, I don't think. It's I don't know. Yet. 
Oh, okay. So then, yeah, I guess this must be. I don't think so, unless it was two that I saw. I can't remember. Um, I, yeah, I, I, think, I mean, I've seen Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark. I don't know. How did I miss? I, for some reason, didn't write that one down. How did I miss that one? That's my Is favorite. that your favorite? Yeah, like, I don't know. I might change well, it. Well, no, I, it's my favorite Indiana Jones movie. It's not my favorite of this year, though. Oh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> see like, what I did to you well, there? Well, I... I I, I had wrote down one that I thought is your favorite. Now, I, I don't know when I go with Raiders and the Lost Ark or Superman. How did I miss these? What did I do? I, I scrolled through the list. Like, I, I looked at every... I must have just, like, went fast for it by a certain part and missed it. You see them, though, now, right? Yeah, I see them now. Um, yeah. What's your favorite of 1981? I gotta think this over now. Um, so, I have to give a quick shout-out to Evil Dead, because it came out in 1980. That's what I thought maybe it was but okay um it's a good i mean it's a great movie it's 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 great for like us because we were making movies when we saw this movie you know like we were using our our cameras and trying to make funny short movies for school and then just making them for ourselves so i mean uh, i still think it's a really even good movie just aside from that i mean there's some no and i I mean like creepy movies in that there's like and Evil Dead, mm-hmm. I, the the vine scene still like gets to me, like just thinking about the vines that the tra- attack oh. one girl, like that's yep, that was the a, that that's was a how really it's creepy, art. creepy, creepy part of the movie. Like I'm like, wow, this is really well done, and like I don't know, I I I, I enjoyed the the setting and the story and like everything about it. Yes, is it cheesy? Mm-hmm. Is the makeup bad? Of course, but. Yep. I think the, the effects are off, are great. but it's, yeah, it's like a, it's a true horror movie and it's crazy. And it, it, it's just like using the resources that they had, you know, what they could afford. They mm-hmm. still made this like thing that stands the test of time, like in just how creepy and weird and interesting it is. But yeah. That one's not my favorite. It's still it's still a good one. I was just shouting it out. Mm. But clearly, you you also enjoy it. I know you do. Um, one very brief shout out for Escape from New York with Kurt Russell. That's a real <laughs> fun movie. I, I think it's a real underrated movie. Doesn't get a lot of attention. I think it's a. Is that the fr- it, there was two Escape movies, right? Was that the first one? Yep. When we were when we were kids in the nineties. Escape from LA was LA, the sequel LA, that came LA out. Was the sequel that came but this was the original from 1981, uh, Escape from New York. It's a it's a really good like sci fi ish, you know, like uh, weird future, like pre Blade Runner, but like in that like uh, almost like in that same vein, that same universe. It could have been, uh, but yeah. Uh, Kurt Russell plays the the brilliantly named Snake Pliskin, who, you know, gives the name for a Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, who they're modeled on. But yeah, it's just, it's just a fun movie. A lot of great lines. What's your favorite? Get to the point here. What is it? It's the Road Warrior. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Wanna... Yep, it's Mad Max Two: The that's Road right. Warrior. That's it's right. just a. It's like a perfect sequel. If you if you were to ask me, like, what is the best sequel ever made? This see, is see, up there. I Besides knew, Empire Strikes Back, yeah, I, you know. I knew I knew but I knew this last because we, we, we were supposed to record this last time we did this episode. Oh, you so you <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you made I, a note of it. I, I had completely forgotten all this like information. I'm like, oh yeah, that was his answer, but I I didn't. I, Evil Dead threw yep. me off because I had I had wrote that down myself because I, I love Evil yep. Dead. Like I don't, I like World War. I just don't remember it enough to, to even like, you. You know I mean, way more like, than I do. If you if you see the two movies, it's it's that like a Mad Max sequel should like outperform the the, the movie that came before it. Like it, it delivers on you know everything. That's why like, um, Fury Road was so good because it like delivered way more than what we were expecting. Um, Oh, when we actually saw it. So, like, two, like, The Road Warrior, it's just, like, the perfect sequel, it improves on every aspect of the previous movie and still makes the character interesting. I don't know. Mel right. Gibson's a piece of shit, but, you know, <laughs> it was a good movie. Well, again, just separate the actor from the 
you know, he, he wasn't considered a piece of shit back then, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At least I didn't know about it. I wasn't born. Yeah, just take it for what it was. <laughs> Other people made that movie, not just Mel Gibson. Let me just say that. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. What about you, Justin? What else did so, you like? So the fact that I have, I've completely kiboshed this year, I don't know how I missed Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't know how I missed that. But I, the, my my original favorite. First, I want to shout out Clash of the Clash of the Titans because oh, I love Harry. I love that movie growing up as a kid. I would, every time I see that, this on is TV, the Harry Hamlin one. Yeah, the really? stop animation one. Yeah. Oh, dude, yes, I love that one too. Yeah, no, it is it is it, it's cheesy as all hell. But nice. I I that's like that was like that would taught me mythology was that movie. <laughs> That and like the Hercules uh, movies from them, they would show them on TV all the time. You're absolutely right. Like yep. I, that's where I would see them, like mm-hmm. randomly on like Sunday afternoon. They'd have Clash yep. of the Titans. Yeah, no, I when I saw that oh, when I was going through the dude. list, because I, I when I go through when I do these things, I look at every single movie of note that was released, and I try to see if I remember them. Yep. And I, yep. how I miss Larry's the Lost Ark, I have no idea. Or Superman two, I have no idea. Um, Those were just like highest grossing, you know. I just, I know, but I just like, I think I just didn't jot them down when I was going through the list itself, not the highest grossing part. But, um, yeah. but yeah, like initially, my my top favorite was going to be History of the World Part One. Oh, um, great it, movie! It's, it's a phenomenal movie. I love. I that's that movie got me into Mel Brooks before I even knew who Mel Brooks was. I mean, mm-hmm. Spaceballs too, but I feel like I used to watch. History of the World Part One all the time, like and again, I think that was like edited on TV or something like that too, as a rerun or yep, what have you. Yep. But yep. I, I don't have much to say about it, but like I, I just like I just loved the little like anthology, like how, mm-hmm. it, but like it's how it's the like same almost little characters. stories. It's yep. like, but like, I think in my head as a kid, I felt that the actors were just time traveling through <laughs> history. <laughs> like that was like I, I think I just made up a story of like. Yeah, they're just You're trying to rationalize they're, it. They're, they're just stuck in time, and but like it's got so many quotable things. Obviously, it's good to be the king is like the biggest one, but like I, I, I just, I mean, and then the fact that they're they're making a sequel. Did you see that? I sent you the yeah the a thing. sequel series. I'm like, I'm wondering if this is going to be like a sketch comedy series. Is well, it going to be well, a scripted series? They're going to treat it like the an anthology. So each episode would be like the anthology that you saw in the movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, oh my gosh, and, I hope there's some really good writers and, on that. Well, Mel Brooks being fun. involved makes me so happy. Like it's like he hasn't done anything in forever. I felt like he was just going to retire. He's really old. I mean, yeah. yeah. He's just going to retire. I mean, hey, he's just as old as William Shatner went to space. I mean, come on. Sure. Sure. <laughs> right? well, and, and he's still sharp as a tack from what, I, from what I gather. And I saw him and Carl Reiner on that Comedians in Cars getting coffee mm-hmm. like a few years back. And it's like, dang, like he is still up and at him, like telling jokes. and Like, I'm just curious well, if his humor can, can land in 2021. We were worried about because they did that Spaceballs animated series that was so terrible. Like yeah. we were kind of like, eh, maybe you should just leave this alone, Mel Brooks. Like, don't don't do this. Again. I, I don't think his humor works animated. You know, you, no. you, you need like you need that kind of like physical uh, presence of people yeah, and physical like you know, and seeing their language. face break. And, like it's it's yeah. it's not all about his his humor. His movies have never been about the dialogue itself i feel like yes yeah, <laughs> there's some funny things it's the delivery right in the like just think of blazing saddles there's so many of them like that's it's exactly like, what i'm like, doing I'm like yeah. laughing to myself i mean like come on like the, the the whole like phrase where he's just like um like like van like uh what's his name gene wilder like his his just demeanor throughout the whole thing you can't get that in an animated format you know, yeah, like, his 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 like quick draw, you know, is like <laughs> yeah, or just like it just like a uh, head he headley Headley, whatever Headley, like he's like that's head <laughs> that's <laughs> that's Headley. <laughs> Thank you, but I just like that, uh, unfortunately this movie wasn't eighties, right? This was this was this was seventies Blazing Saddles. Yeah, yeah, shucks. Um, but maybe we'll do a seventies version of this uh, of our it's little so anthology hard. series. It's so hard. <laughs> um, but anyways, like yeah, like it just him just on the rock saying the do that voodoo that you do, like 
Like I can't see that in an animated format. You know, it's like uh, I don't know. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I, yeah. I, I hope it's good. But yeah, Blazing Sound History of the World Part Two One. I, I've always wanted a sequel. Like I just like because the fact that they called it Part One. Yep, you're Me. just waiting for <laughs> like. Does this mean? Does this mean that like Mel Brooks knows he's dying? He's like, okay, we got to do part two. Yep. I've had it ready for years now. Here yep. we go. Yep, he just needed more information. He needed more history to, to finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll be funny. No, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but I'm uh, very much looking yeah, forward to that. I, I don't know. Like, it's now that I remember, Razor, Razor Lost Ark is a great movie like the ending is awesome it is. And it's not my fate it, it's i liked i like some of the later raider movies like i really like um the third one uh i can't remember it now last oh one. last crusade yeah last no crusade. Ra- last crusade is great too it's a good movie raiders of the lost ark though is it's still kind of it just, yeah, the I best know. to me i don't know i'm sorry I like- temple of doom was the first one i saw and i was like oh okay so this is indiana jones yeah. and then i watched the first one i was like what Wait, like, I, I just we're not gonna talk confusing. about Lance Crusade at all. I just like the I like the obstacle course he goes through. Like that's that sold yes. me. Like you know, it's like him like making like the, the, the trials. Thing. You know, like I just only the that. penitent man will pass. Only the penitent <laughs> man will pass. <laughs> and then Sean Connery out in the back, penitent man, penitent man, because he's been stabbed. And that's what they that's what they need the Holy Grail for is to cure Sean Connery. Yep, yep. Works for me though. Works for me. It's a good movie. Um. All right. Well. Yeah, That's all I have with eighteen eighty one. That's all I have for eighty one. Yes, let's do it. Eighty two. All right, nineteen eighty two. Hey, we're getting close to being born here. No, seriously. <laughs> so um, I, I'll give off the grossing films. Sure. Uh, for eighty two, we have E. T. The Extra Trestle. Great movie, by the way. Um, I I watch E. E. T. All the time. It's not my favorite, but I'm just gonna say I loved E. T. Like I. I would watch it on my on a VHS like multiple times. Really? Yeah. I I, I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch it later in life, or did you watch it as a kid? Not later in life. No. So oh, I can't see. Okay. Yeah. Really judge, I guess. But yeah, I watched I, it the kid. last time I watched it was in Spanish class, and it was in Spanish. Yeah. No, I watched so. it like a lot when it when I like. I mean, was this came out in. 82 and i think it probably came to vhs at one point my parents got it or recorded it they probably recorded it most likely i can't remember but i i would i would watch this because i don't know it's just like when you're a kid you're watching as a kid like you're you're watching like a kid that was like my age like do this adventure with a with an alien uh, okay you so know, it was definitely like a a moment in time for yeah you. like it just was i don't know i i loved it and it's funny because they have so many star wars references in that in that movie but yes, I, I didn't even lot. I didn't know what Star Wars, Wars was. I didn't know what it was yep. back then. I didn't know what it <laughs> wasn't even a fan. Mm-hmm. But E.T. Tootsie, like I'm trying to know, uh, an officer and a gentleman, Rocky Three. Uh, an officer and a gentleman is the famous one with the uh, uh, Richard Gere. I've got no place to go. Oh, Do you remember? No, I don't. Know that's this. the. He's, he becomes a marine. And then he whisks. Uh, it's the ending where the dude comes and takes the girl out of the factory and carries her out, and he's like dressed in his uh, navy uniform, I guess. I don't. Remember it's like a famous. I don't know. I movie asked. trope. Okay. I don't know. Rocky Three, Porkies. Um, I remember this movie, by the way. I, for some reason, I don't know why. Hey, we. This is the only time we'll get to say whorehouse on the show. So, at number nine this year was the best little whorehouse in Texas. Oh, okay. That's not the, that's not the only time. We can say it. I'm sure we can find another time to say it, right? But we never have occasion mm-hmm. to say it. You know, we never just bring up whore, whorehouses. Let's just so do, it. was just nice to naturally be able do, to say let's whorehouse. Let's just watch The Witcher, and we can say it all the time, right? Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say number six, because I feel like this might be a conversation, but it's Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Very good movie. Yep. Design. But I'll, I'll shout out another movie that came out this year <laughs> for you. Okay. The Thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, John Carpenter. Uh, guys stuck in an, uh, an Alaskan like outpost. 
like research outpost being terrorized by an alien that takes over people's bodies and mimics what they look like. So mm-hmm. anybody could be the alien. Another Stephen King. It's the 80s all about Stephen King, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good movie. It's a scary movie. The visual effects are crazy. And all like the puppetry and how they make that alien work is crazy. It's a cool film. I've never. It's one of the few that I've not seen. I've not seen the thing. Oh, dude, you would love it too. You would love. You would appreciate it. Okay. It's very anime-ish, and did, I don't think they, people would admit it did back they, then. Did they? Re, didn't they remake that recently? Did you watch the remake? I, I saw part of the remake. I watched like the first half of it, and I gave up. Like it was just. <laughs> it was. It's like they were making a shot-for-shot shot remake in some in some parts and it was like why why am i like i just watched the original one with better actors yeah you know um, instead of this like yeah so i don't have any shout outs except for et that's the only one i have um the yeah. other one i'm not sure do you want to talk about this other one what is your favorite paul i'll tell you my favorite um you want to talk it's not a wrath of khan even though wrath of khan is a great movie it was hard it was between these two i thought wrath of khan uh, may be it i don't know what the other one could be it's a good movie, but a movie that I've liked longer than it, and is just like a guilty pleasure for me, is Conan the Barbarian. Oh, okay, I did see that on the list. That's right. I yeah, know. I just I I really yeah, liked this we, movie as a it, kid. We, we and I, and I still this, like it. Yeah, we've talked a lot of this in depth uh, on our yeah. favorite Arnold or Schwarzenegger movie. Of course, movie season. I won't. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole episode dedicated to Arnold, so we don't have to rehash it all. It was, it's still just because like it was. A moment in time for me as well. I saw myself in Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, fighting with swords. Yeah, that's what. Uh, I, those I, are the movies I've I saw. always was interested in Conan yeah. the Barbarian, but I feel like I could never. Like I, to me, Conan. My experience with Conan was like seeing it on TV, but I always I was already missing the the beginning, or yep, I was watching always. the end, and like or like I was just like. Catching it at like random parts, so, like I feel like I've watched the whole movie of Conan and the Barbarian, but not in one sitting whatsoever. I have no idea the order of that they they happen. Like, I, like that's oh, you know what I mean. That, that that was me until I started dedicating <laughs> my time to finding out when it would be on. So I, I I would make sure like oh all right it starts at two o'clock like I'm not doing anything at two o'clock like I have to get back home. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian's gonna start it's on like, USA. It's like, it's like Paul, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna play one more match. We need you here, like no. I'm no, sorry. it was <laughs> like we were playing like um, like capture the flag or something, and I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> I peaced out. But Paul, you bring you have the flag. Stay. Nobody asked me. Thank God, nobody asked me where are you going. I was like, I just gotta. I'm like, I gotta go. Uh, goodbye, and then I ran. <laughs> um. Uh, it is a good film. I, I want before I say my favorite uh, Star Trek two. It, it like I know it gets like the whole like con thing that we everyone quotes, but overall the movie is really good. Like I mean, like it aside is. from that, you know, it's like it is a good movie. It, um, and I would even go so far as to say it's a good like like uh, it's a good three episodes. You know, if if this was three episodes in the series, it would make sense. I know it's all like the budget is bigger and and everything looks a little shinier, but like the story itself is a good Star Trek story. Yeah, you know, you're right. It's it definitely is. like a uh, um, a good arc. Like it has a beginning, middle, and end. They didn't do a lot of you... continuous episodes in original Star Trek, though. It, it mm-hmm. usually was all contained to that one episode. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it, they had it, maybe... it was like. One that the I can perfect think of. villain brought back. Yeah, but no, yeah, Con, Con was, was great. Stuff. Con was great. But my favorite movie um, has actually been a favorite before. Um, it's Blade Runner. Oh, okay. I didn't think it would be Rocky Three. No, not Rocky. Three. No. <laughs> and it is favorite flop, and unfortunately, it did not make the top uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it didn't make the the top list at all. It had the biggest budget, I think, of the year. It was like it really insanely wow. big budget. Like it just barely made it. I mean, I think over time it probably made even, it made enough money to make it worth to make a sequel, obviously. But um, yeah, but it took all the way up until you, what twenty eighteen. <laughs> yeah, but the thing the thing with that, I, I've never watched the source. I never read the source material for that movie. Like uh, what it's called. Uh, 
but oh, um, uh, do ro- sheep do robots do dream of selected sheep or something like that? That's right. Yep, yep, that's it. But like, I mean, I, I, I need, I need it. I definitely, I de- It deserves a rewatch. It's been quite some time, but I remember like that was like something I asked for for like Christmas. Like I don't know what it was really? about that movie. Like I got my mom bought that for a Christmas present, like the director's DVD cut. And I was always just like interested. I think I would. I don't know what got me to learn about it. Like I was getting really into sci-fi with Star Wars at the time, obviously too. So like like my interest of looking at anything science fiction, anime was getting kind of big at that time too. And we had just I had just gotten a DVD player because I got that pretty early. Um, I remember like all my other my, my friends were like, "You got a DVD player?" It's like cause I got like at sixteen, I got a DVD player. And um, yeah. Which compared to a lot of people, that's a lot earlier. Um, and I, I, <clears throat> we've talked on the show how like we had a small selection of DVDs to pick from. Um, there was only like three <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> movies but, that were turned into DVDs. But Blade Runner was one of those movies that were in that was in that small section, and I had heard of Blade Runner. I'm like, hey, it's on DVD. There's a director's cut. I didn't even know what a director's cut was back then, but I remember getting. We thought it, it was cool. Yeah. I, I, like you know, like I was really into commentary and stuff too, like that. And that Ooh. that movie, like I remember seeing like bits and pieces of it online. I, I obviously had Harrison Ford in it, so it's like I was curious because I mean I was big into Star Wars. And I mean, again, I, I talk about this in, in length in our favorite flops episode. But it's been a while since we've done that. But I I have like gotten a book that someone gave me at college about like how it like all the symbolisms in the movie and like what they were trying to go for and like I was starting to see like what the movie was trying to say and just visually it's such a weird science fiction movie like yeah it's like it's like so much happens but nothing happens mm-hmm. like you know what i mean like it's like it's, it's just it, it's just like showing you what this world is like and here's like a small tale like this small little story in this huge and strange world like yeah it yeah. It, it takes a lot to go very very well, like a very short distance like and, it's and decker is is not a good like protagonist like he, he's he's not like he's a bad person it's just that he doesn't really win no like you know he just he just kind of flails around and guesses and falls in love and then pretty much doesn't win like he he, he almost dies but then the android just gives up he was he ran out of, you know he runs out of battery or whatever mm. and like it's just there's so many like interesting actors in that movie the characters are so different and weird and unique like every single person like there's no there's no like just sort of like i would say what do you want to call it just like side character like even the people that are giving him food like noodles oh, and stuff oh no yeah like edward james almost in that is really bizarre too, yeah you know? yeah like just it's... like yeah there's something just weird about everything it's a lot to take in i think that's what you're kind of getting at like <laughs> yeah and this is like but then you but you're you're almost distracted movie. by like the the special effects of it too right because it holds up like really well for being yep. an, a, a movie made in 1982 like it like it kind of blows star wars out of the water with some of the things it was trying to do like just like you know, you got to think of the time and place too. Like, you know, where, where they're flying through like the city, and they got the big Coca Cola screen, and mm-hmm. I like they're they're kind of um, uh, what this the way you want to call. I don't know the phrase like satire, political satire of like how China has taken over everything and owns everything. Mm-hmm. Like you know, those kind of that kind of commentary. Asian culture just like seeps into yeah, like it's yeah, everywhere. everywhere. It's everywhere. like it's like it's normal. It's yep. like like mm-hmm. him like. You know, it's it's but it's sort of weird seeing like, like it's not weird. Like at the time watching it, it's like it's like it was weird seeing like you know Harrison Ford surrounded by Asian people eating ramen. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like a kind of a weird kind of look to it. Like it didn't seem right, and like I just oh, it's just such a it's such a good movie, and just like, the 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 dialogue and the delivery of the dialogue, the acting, the scenes. Like I, don't know, I could go on and on, but just like. It's such a good movie. I love that movie. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it deserves to be talked about yet again. (laughs) But, no, it is. It's strange to look at. That's what makes it 
such an interesting. And I'll movie. give credit to the sequel too. I know that's not time and place, but I think the sequel did a good job as well. But anyways, fair enough. Let's fair move enough. on. Let's move on to our birth. Yes, we're born now, and a great movie came out this year. A couple of great movies. I don't only really have a couple to talk about because out of what <laughs> came out of 1983, well, I, the... there is one. There is one. Obviously, that's really awesome. Came out a couple weeks before I was born. Um, Return of the Jedi, of course, my favorite yep. in this list. But I'll have to say, like, because Return of the Jedi is my least favorite of the original trilogy. It's and there's actually a couple other movies that kind of in the Star Wars. Now that we have so many movies, it, like it kind of like it, it always falls lower on the list in my in my kind of love for rewatching. Like Return of the Jedi is fine. I like yep. it. But like rewatching it, it's like it is sort of like I don't know. There's just something ex- I don't know what about it. It's like it just seems to it, it kind of doesn't hit as good as some of the other ones. It feels um, like it got softened over, like the stuff that um, the kind of maturity and and you know complicated storytelling of the Empire Strikes Back, you know, telling like this very you know complex tale of father and son now and, and you know like how like you know visually stunning that movie was this movie felt like like it's also my favorite too by the way return of the jedi okay it it, it felt like everything just got kind of softened a little bit you it's, know it's, like it's, it's made more like family friendly yeah, it's also two movies it's like it's it doesn't really two very different movies. Yeah, two it, very different movies. It's two like different you got, stories. You got the whole job of the palace thing, and then you got a little mm-hmm. you got a little intermission going to Yoda's place, and then and then you know it's like the yeah, battle definitely. at Endor. The battle at Endor is pretty awesome. Like I mean, overall, it's yeah. a pretty cool experience. Yeah, sure. I love the battle between Vader and, and Luke. Like it's great. It's Listen, just... Return of the Jedi is about the ending. Like yeah. watching the part with the Ewoks, just fast forward through it. You know, I, mean, I, I, I would watch I this don't movie hate and Ewoks. Ewoks are fine. They're no, no, no. I, I'm just, but I'm just saying. Like, I loved. Like, I, I wanted to see the lightsaber fighting. All right, I wanted to see Vader versus Luke. Yeah. So I would always yeah. fast forward to watch the last battle. Um, the music, maybe the music in, in the blowing the music, up of the, the Death Star. The music what? of that was good. The fighting. yes. With Luke, mm-hmm. but I will defend the Ewoks. To and there's nothing wrong with them. Well, here's the thing, and I've told this on the story, the show before. Maybe, and maybe you don't remember. I didn't know what Star Wars was when I, for most, for the first like twelve years of my life, mm-hmm. all I knew were Ewoks because I watched the cartoon. I had an Ewok board game, so I would defend those Ewoks, and that's all I'll say. Okay. All right, no one's no one's attacking the Ewoks here. <laughs> the Empire did. Cool. But if, <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's over now. <laughs> the Ewoks won. Don't worry. We know that uh, later on, much later on, we, we we found out that Lucas intended for it to be Kashyyyk in the Wookiee planet, and it, it would be what happened in Revenge of the Sith. Um, but then, but I guess budgetary I... concerns and. I mean, you couldn't, really, you couldn't make it work. Really, I mean, I don't know. No, it, it, it's I like actually, a whole other movie if you're doing that. Yeah, like you know? well, then you have the conversation with, like like Chewbacca and I don't know. I'm kind of glad what we got. Like you got yeah. some really like there's some really cool moments in Return of the Jedi. I mean, you got the Rancor. You know, it's like you, like you said, you got the battle with Vader. Like you got a B wing. You know, like come on. <laughs> yes, we got to see B wings. <laughs> they don't look anything animal, like the letter animal, B. Animal. What? Admiral Akbar, and they look like a, a bee. Like a bee. Like a bumblebee. Really? Bee wings? That's look what like I, bumblebees? They do. They look like a bee. You've never seen a picture of a looking like a bee? I've... Take are it, you serious? Take what, it. what a bee looks like and what a bee wing looks like. A bee wing is like a like a cross on its side. Yeah, but not... That's like, a but, bee wing. But put in attack position. Attack position's vertical... With two wings okay. out, you have a head and a stinger. Oh my gosh! All right, that's a bit of a stretch. I'm I think just gonna say. I think that's what that's they're going for. I think that's what they're going for. All right, all right. 
then what is an A-wing? A cat's mouth? Like <laughs> that's just, just an A-wing. That's a, that's a letter A. They oh, just a they re- they didn't know how to make a letter B, so they just called it B. I don't. I'm just saying what I know and what I see. Oh, my God. oh that's funny. <laughs> You've never, you've never seen the bee-looking shape? It's it's technically the shape. I've seen that shape. I just never associated <laughs> it with the bee. It looks like a bee. Oh, my gosh. All of them look like letters. X-Wing. Why? Why would I think this looks like a bumblebee? My first instinct would be like, what letter does this look like? An A-Wing. An X-Wing. A Y-Wing. Why does the bee get to be a bumblebee? <laughs> I'm, I don't think that's fair I'm, of the bee wing. I think everybody check. can choose whatever animal they want to be. I'm going to check Wikipedia. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. <laughs> yeah, you go check Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Please. The Wikipedia says. Uh, well, while you're looking for that, I'm just going to bring up another movie. Go ahead. That's, that's really good. That came out this year, 1983. Not my favorite, but there's it's it's a cultural like milestone. Uh, Scarface with Al Pacino. Okay. All right. Al Pacino playing a Cuban gangster um, who rises to power and becomes like a huge drug kingpin with international ties to like worldwide crime and distribution of cocaine, all this stuff, and how it like how it tragically, I guess, falls um, or how it, you know, must fall. Mm -hmm. Uh, But. It's a, there's so many, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere in, in pop culture, like references to Scarface. Even until today, you still see references to Tony Montana. I, I, saw, I, watched, I, watched, hello to my little friend. I watched that movie on a bus ride for football ones. Oh, really? <laughs> the perfect venue for seeing any that movie. My, that, was my, that was my experience. It was all right. It was fun. It was, like, it was good. I enjoyed it. I mean, but I was on, you know, those those like Greyhound br- like screens. So the little yes, exactly little coming screen. down from the roof. Yeah. Were you close at least? Did you have a good view, or were you um, like? I had. I had. Yeah. A look, I mean, it was the screen was to the right. You know, it was it was right. It was like a seat up in front of me, so it was a good view. But it's not turned my head. So you know, kind of, kind of was annoying. It was kind of annoying. <laughs> it made me literally turn my head. <laughs> This action, what I just did, that was too much for you on the, on the bus. You weren't like the it's fifth long, it's, seat it's, it's a long back, movie. just like. It's uh, a long movie. I was in the front. I was in like the second seat of the bus, and the, the you know it was a screen right there. It was like, I, I almost was like too close. So it's like being like sort of like at the you know the front of the movie theater. So you have to yeah. turn your head like to look at it. Like it was kind of like too close. You know, too close. Yeah, too oh, close. Too close. Too close. I'm yeah. afraid of that front row in the movie theater. I'll never do that. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I understand the like the leg room would be nice, but I actually yeah. like bunching my legs up under the seat in front of me. I miss like small seat. I had to do that for and, Rogue One, and like I remember, like like you're just like your head just moving wherever things are happening on the screen, <laughs> just like looking around. Um, I can't find the answer to the B wing. I still think it looks like a B. Um, I mean, you can think that. that that's okay. I mean, you said it doesn't look like a lowercase B. I think my option's better than yours. Oh my god. Anyway, I didn't. I didn't come up with the letter sequence. Okay, they did. I'm just saying. No, they. they, they it doesn't go in order though. There's no C wing. Right, so D wing. They they keep coming out with wings every time they make a new movie. There was new wings in the Rogue, in the Rogue One uh, movie. I think that was a C wing. The, the like the the shuttle thing that they steal. <laughs> Anyways, their ship. Uh, my shout outs for nineteen eighty three. We don't spend a lot of time on one of them's trading spaces. I'm going to give some for Jaden played places. Oh yes, very funny movie. Very Dan Aykroyd and, and uh, Eddie Murphy, awesome uh, movie. But this movie, I actually would watch. I, ha- I actually have to watch this movie every year. It's tradition. It's tradition. It's my shout out. Christmas story. It's a Christmas, Christmas story. story. It's, a Christmas, it's a Christmas story. story. Okay. Yep. 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 I, I I mean, I can't I can't go wrong with Christmas story. It's a good movie. It's a good Christmas movie. Yep. It's Christmas to me. I, everyone else wants to watch like Elf and Christmas Wonderland and all the White Christmas and all that. This is the only Christmas yep. movie I need. This Christmas story. That's it. 
Christmas Story and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Those are the yeah, only. That's a good one too. I wouldn't and want... How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original one. Sorry, <laughs> the original one. Uh, I, I I actually don't mind Tim Allen Santa Claus. I'm not like gonna rush out to see it, but I'd be okay to watch that one. That's okay. Well, my wife likes that movie quite a bit. The Santa Claus. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good story to tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have learned to love. I've learned to tastefully make fun of it while we watch it, so that I, I can it. I can get through it. I can't watch any other ones. Laugh. I only like the first one. I can't watch. Sequels. Yeah, yeah, the no. Are... She's the same way. It was the, yeah, first, the one. first one, and it's fine. The kid's annoying. It's strange and weird, but <clears throat> what about what, which, what are your feelings on Jingle All the Way? What are your feelings on that Christmas movie? Well, Is that the Arnold one? Yeah, Arnold and Sinbad. <laughs> yeah. They're fighting over actually, a toy. Actually, but... what's his name? The two Jake Lloyds in that too. That's his son. Uh, oh, that's Cowell. right. Yeah. That's... He's the son. Okay, yeah. So it's um, Arnold uh, and Sinbad fighting mm-hmm. over like Action Man, Tur- like some Turbo Man, Turbo Man, an action yeah. figure toy for I, his I, son. We've talked about it. I just Arnold Schwarzenegger is really funny. That's that's the only thing I'll say. But anyway, we're not here to about Christmas yeah. movies. That's the last time I want to hear about Sinbad in the 80s. It won't be the last time. <laughs> was he an 80s person? Right. I don't think he was in the 80s or anything. Yeah, he got popular in mid-80s. Was I'm pretty 80s? sure. No, it was 90s. That's when he started like doing his comedy. Yeah, and then, like, really by the time he got to the 90s, he was like on television Yeah, and stuff. All but right, last, last movie of our part one of the 80s here. So 1984. Did we, oh, did I, we do 83 for the top? Five movies? We didn't do that, did we? Oh, so it was War Games, Trading Places, Flashdance, oh. Terms of Endearment. Wait, where are you looking? I have... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the U.S. gross. <laughs> Why don't you tell me? Well, I have highest grossing films U.S. for Wikipedia. Wikipedia is Return of the Jedi, Terms of Endearment, Flashdance, Trading Spaces, and War Games. That's what I just said. I just did it in reverse order. I went from five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I didn't know you were going down the list. I, I was like, "Where are you?" Going? I am. I, I, I'm doing it like Total Request Live here. I'm oh. going down, counting down, counting down the hits. Risky business on okay. here too. Octopussy. Mister Mom. Mister Mom's good. Movie. Staying alive. The sequel to Saturday Night Fever. You don't remember Mister Mom? Uh, Michael who was that? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. No, I don't think I saw that one. That was good. But I did. I did see Staying... Or no, I did not see Staying Alive. But that is the one where John Travolta is 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 turned into like a professional dancer in the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's as good as it sounds. Great. Yeah, no, Mr. What? Mom's funny. It's like he just like... He, he, like, he just like stays at home and takes care of all, like a ton of kids. Because his wife has to work. Because, you know, back then, that, that's unusual. Sounds pretty self-explanatory, Mr. Yeah, Mom. Yeah, it's, it's a very unusual thing to happen back in the 80s. You know, a dad mm-hmm. staying home. It's worth making a movie about because it's, yeah, cause it's you know, hilarious. so quirky and weird. <laughs> he, wears, yep. he, he stays at home. And he wears, like, uh, war, like uh, construction goggles while he's doing it. So it makes it funny. Oh, I bet at one point there's a funny scene where he wears an apron. Yep. <laughs> And I bet something that he cooks doesn't go as planned. Well, he finds better ways to cook it, you know, because he, he uses his, his construction aspects. Oh, his man know. brain? You're saying he uses his man, man brain? Anyway, let's move on to 1984. Maybe we should watch this movie together. <laughs> I watched this movie. I remember liking it. It was kind of fun. I don't know. My mom used to watch movies like this all the time, so I'd watch it with her. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, that's what movies were, so... <laughs> Now they're just right. like TV shows oh, for... or, or YouTube skits. Um, 1984. Yeah, that's a lot good. of fun ones. May I give you the highest grossing sure. films of 1984? Sure. Go... 1984, excuse me. Are you going to go five to one? Is that what you're going to do? Yes. Coming in at number five, The Karate Kid. Yep. And that's all we need to say about that. It's a good movie. And good coming movie. in at number four, Gremlins. Very good movie. The original Gremlins. I'm not as familiar with this one, to tell you the truth. I've seen Gremlins 2 way more. Well, I've seen both. But I know two more, right? right? I agree. But I've seen both a lot. 
uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, mm-hmm. the first Indiana Jones sequel, and uh, Ghostbusters at number two, mm-hmm. and number one, Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy. Hey, hey is when he was got big, yeah. and then they yeah. decided to make him go in every single movie and to ruin his career. Um, <laughs> also on this list, Police Academy, which I have not seen in years, but I'm not a big fan of Steve Gutenberg. So don't say that uh, to me. It's gonna make my feelings. Um, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock is on there as well. Of course, you got to find out what happened to him. Yes. <laughs> there are several good movies in this in this year. Yeah, I besides... actually I actually have a list of movies here to talk about. Um, to be honest, I, I honestly had a hard time picking a favorite for do this you want year. It? I do want to talk. Want I, do, I want to talk about right this one one movie that has nothing to do with favorites, or is it good? Okay. Or anything. But I want to talk about this one movie that came out in 1984 called Hot Dog the Movie. Okay? Oh, okay. Cause hot Dog. I, <laughs> if you don't know what Hot Dog is, it's like Porky's. It was like a Porky's movie. So, okay. So Hot Dog the Movie teenage is... Teenage sex it, comedy? Yes, it was a teenage sex comedy with, 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 that was like rated R, I guess. Because that's what they Rocky. did rated R. They did rated R versions of It was like Judd this. Apatow, but not gross. So this movie was like... It was like they took place at like a ski competition, so it was like a yeah. ski lodge thing. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know why it's called. We gotta the, save the lodge. I don't know why it's called Hot Dog. I never understood it, or was it called Hot Dog the Movie? Like I don't understand. That's the actual title. It's Hot Dog, Hot the, Dog movie. the Movie. Um, I tried looking up why it was called the movie, but no, there's no like. It's not like referencing something. It's just what it is that's just the title so okay. this is a movie that like I, my parents had recorded on vhs off something and i stumbled on it and it was the only nice. vhs uh film that we had that had nudity on it uh, so, so this was a very important vhs in your household <laughs> for a young child very important didn't have that didn't have the internet of course like i just obviously would show friends this film oh. those specific scenes those dark days. <laughs> the movie was fun. I remember watching the movie because I'd watch the whole movie, obviously, just to mm-hmm. just to just to see it. Make I sure missed, you make yeah, sure I got it What the movie has to offer, yes, yes. of course. Like <laughs> to the, get to the very last. All I remember it was like a movie about just people, dudes in the ski lodge, just like hitting on girls at a ski lodge, and them like, you know, it kind of felt like. Um, I don't even know what movie would... I guess it was sort of an American of Pie vibe. But all these, like, teenagers weren't teenagers. They were all adults uh-huh. doing things. And, like... <laughs> yes. And it's, like, you know, it's, like, dramedy. Like, you know, like, this guy... This guy... This is the hot shot. And it, it was just, like, him skiing. Like, them putting, like, suntan lotion on their faces when they're, ski- they're skiing. I thought that was weird. I don't know why. Like, I was just, like... <laughs> Lots of sun, I guess, out there. I just wanted to give this a shout-out because there was a small... Like kind of memory, ridiculous to my child, thing. Child heart. I was just like, oh, this is when that movie came out. I watched this movie a lot as a kid, and I'd fast forward through a lot of parts. But it was something that definitely was part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Justin, for sharing with us the first movie you spanked it to. I, well, I didn't. I didn't know what that was back then. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, 1984. Yes, this is. You were one well, years old when I, you stumbled oh. upon it. It was just a very no, important I, well, film. You thought it was later. a good movie. You didn't think later. of it that way. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I just want to bet. Okay. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to go in a complete opposite direction, and I'm going to mention Children of the Corn. Okay. Because it's a solid. It's a solid horror movie. It's got some uh, interesting stuff happening. Very like folk. Like like uh, if you like The Witch or any of this kind of like folk American horror type of stuff. You would dig Children of the Corn. It's very like uh, like the Wicker Man or Midsummer. I always kind of... wanted to watch Children of the Corn. I remember seeing it in the rental aisles at you know back in high school. And it's never it, it, it definitely lands more if you come from like a religious family because it's basically like a crazy uh, religious uh, cult in the wo- in the in the corn. I was going to say in the woods, but in the corn. Uh, but there is like an actual monster thing that they worship, which is crazy. Uh, but they call him, or they call it, he who walks behind the rose. And it's like, oh, just gives us the chills. Anyways, yeah, solid Shout horror out. film of its time. Also, out this year, 
Uh, not going to make any uh, highest grossing list for sure. Is uh, Dune, 1984's Dune. Oh, that come out this year? Oh, well, okay. Yep. Good thing to bring that so up. So not, not a moneymaker, and, and, and for the longest time was panned by critics. Um, still a really interesting looking movie and an interesting story. A yeah, weird I think one. we've been talking about doing a deep dive in that film. I think mm-hmm. I've been thinking about that. Let's just segue into that really quick. We'll talk about it here on the show. I've been really wanting to watch the miniseries of Dune again. Oh, okay. And obviously the new Dune's coming out. And, you know, maybe we can have a Dune conversation. I, I think we should. And I think we should just watch the new one. And yeah. maybe we should watch the original movie. Because you've never seen the original movie. No, We've both yeah. seen the miniseries. You've seen the... Okay, did you see both the miniseries? Did you see both The of Children of Dune. I didn't finish it, but I read what happens did you know but i read the books so i do know what happened did you know james mcavoy is paul's son in that movie yes isn't that crazy so wild i don't know why it is it's like oh my god that was that dude like he was that guy yeah like i can't believe how young he was in that but (laughs) yeah james mcavoy Hmm. anyways uh i i missed that for some reason maybe i maybe i just didn't write it's it's Kyle McLaughlin, and it's a lot of um, internal monologue being spoken, like a voiceover. Uh, but you need it because there's so much to explain in this movie. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm excited to see the new one because I think they'll do a pretty good job of it. Hopefully, I've heard really good things in the Greenlit Part Two. So, yep, Part Two is going to come. So it seems like they're doing it. Shout out! I want to just do shout. We don't talk about it too much. I want to shout out the Re- the Revenge of the Nerds. Because I was a big fan oh, of okay. Let's shut that up. I personally liked Police Academy, and I watched almost every single one. I don't know. I've tried. Oh, wow. I'm sure I missed one of them because they made like 20. But okay. I, I don't know. I was. I mean, you said you didn't like what's his name, Scootenberg or whatever his name Gutenberg. is. Like, like yeah, yeah, he wasn't why I watched those films. I watched it because of everyone else. Like. You know, yes, the people doing good jokes in those movies. They're, well, they they're have like, the actor like, that did the sound stuff. Like he did the sound, like the he yes. was in baseball. Um, um, I just found out he he retired because he became a single parent, and he's coming back oh. into acting. That's why you haven't seen him in anything. I saw an article about that, like really, the, just the other day. Like he's gonna, he's like, I, he's, he's like, I got more sounds okay. to make. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I've got more sounds to make. Or something like that. Um, Sounds good, dude. Yep, it does. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Police Academy. And okay. see, this is where I got stuck. Gremlins, I, I did want to shout out. That was a good, great, great movie. Like, obviously it created like a, I don't know, like, that was a thing in the 80s. Gizmo and all that stuff. Little critter movies, but yes. I, I'm, I am torn between two. So I want to see what your favorite is first. My favorite was as soon as I saw that um, this movie came out in 1984, it was clear to me what my favorite movie is. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time, too, and it's Amadeus. Oh, um, I did see that. It stars That's F, right. F, F. Marie Abraham and, as uh, Antonio Salieri, and his better his musical rival, Mozart, played by, um, what's his name? Oh... F. Murray Abraham and Peter Holch or something like that. I forget. Tom Holch. I forget his I name. Know, but he's movie. really great in it as well. Like It's a movie about like revenge and um, mediocrity and, and, and being able to like recognize the genius of somebody even though, you know, that person's uh, terrible, you know, and like irresponsible. But they're like a piano prodigy and uh, it's just a it's just a good movie overall. Yeah, this Excellent. One, a lot movie. Of, lot of, one of my favorites. Is one of the best picture I think that year too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've never definitely. Seen that. I knew you. I knew you liked that movie. The music is amazing too. I mean, like it's it's uh, all the stuff you wanted to to play when you when we were like in band, like all together. And no, oh, it's good. It's a good movie. Definitely worth seeing if you haven't seen it, especially if you are a lover of music. See, the movie that I'm torn between, and I think I'm going to pick one or the other, because the other one, I prefer the sequel over the, the original. Um, it's funny, because they both have sequels. Um, it's either between Terminator or Ghostbusters. Ooh, Terminator 1984? Yeah. 
They did. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. So, I'm going to pick That's those. a tough one. Yeah, and I, I... Because I like Terminator 2 so much more than the original. Terminator 1 is actually a good movie. It's but, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine, it's good. right? It's like... But I don't think it... Like when you oh, think idea. when you think of the Terminator, you don't think of Terminator One. No, no, it's it's more Terminator Two. Terminator One was like kind of, I mean, it was like a if this works, this could be something really cool. But it took um, it took it was a just decade, like a decade to make a sequel. Yeah. you think about yeah. it, right? Yeah, well, it did take a while. So, I mean, it came this it came out in nineteen eighty four. The sequel came out when we were like in. What fifth, sixth grade? I, I think like it that. came out ninety three or something like 90, that. 92, 93, Yeah, yeah. So we're like, like nine or ten years old there. Yep. So I mean, so. I, I, I that's why Ghostbusters I think is my favorite because I watched the original Ghostbusters quite a bit. Um, yeah, I would, and it's better than the sequel. But even though I love the sequel, still, um, I know you don't like Slimer. I think we've talked about this before, but you've never. Yeah. <laughs> But no, but but the first movie is better. It is like yeah, a, it's it's a the, great the second one's fun, sure, but the first one is, is like a it, it's because it, it is actually scary. Like it's it's not like crazy scary, but there's like there are some scares to be had. I guess I mean it's creepy. I guess is a better phrase to say, and it's a good film. And I love the ending, like with this marshmallow man, and and yep. like it just it, it just the, it, it just the chemistry between all the actors in the film really 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 sell it. Like. Bill yep. Murray, Sigourney Reaver, all of them. Like they're all just, they're all they're all on point for that film. And it was so Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, of course, Sigourney <laughs> Weaver did a good job. Um, it and, and honestly, it was a very unique movie. Like, I mean, you didn't really. I mean, think of yeah. what other movies like that. Like they've tried to like like, do... or, like not horror, but like spooky and scary, but also really funny at the same time, and like an ensemble cast. Yeah, like there's nothing. Yeah. Like, I think the, the they I just can't think of any film that there's been a movie. I think the only movie that's like tried to copy that was like the movie called Evolution, like David Duchovny. And, oh gosh, yes. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> It was, it was fine. Like, yeah, but like, yeah. I mean, like, it's just something about Ghostbusters, and it, you know, it became a theme. You know, it became a big thing. And there's still people out there that like love Ghostbusters. Like, I go to conventions and yep. the whole like they Ghostbuster do. booth. You know, like they're obsessed with it. Like, but no, oh, good movie. I don't have like there's not a ton to say about it. You know, it's yep. definitely had a very interesting, awesome theme song that was very popular too. So. <laughs> I mean, the, well, of course, there's more we can say about it. I mean, but do you remember when you did you see this? Like when it, like, uh, like how old were you when you first saw I this? Had, it, I get a lot of these films were all recorded by my my parents. Yeah. So like, I they like, must have from watched like the movie. HBO preview week when yeah. they like. Yep. Exactly. They, they were into these films as, a, as you know when I was a baby. You know, like in what eighty four I was one years old, right? So it's like there's no way I would have watched this. So. I, all of a sudden, we had a collection of recorded movies in a, in a closet, and and it's just like we do with our kids now. We show them some older movies and whatnot. I mean, the the difference though now is I feel like there's so much new content coming out too. It's, it's like it's hard to you know where do you what do you show them? Do you show them the new movie? Do you show them the old movie? Do you show them? And they can access it so easily. Back then, it's like you only had what you had. You know, it's like you didn't yep. really have a lot to pick yep. from. They're so like yeah, your choices were so limited, and but yeah, no, I think you need a mix. I think you need a mix of both. Like I like being able to watch older movies with the kids, mm -hmm. and them not being like, oh, this isn't new. I don't want to watch it. No, I think they're they they dig that like movies are just different. Yeah, like, yeah, like you can even... tell stories in different ways. It doesn't always have to be one specific way. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 I've shown old stuff to my, my kids, and sometimes they love it. They're just like, oh, this is so unique and different than what I'm used to seeing. And there's sort yep. of a different vibe to these older things. And sometimes they're like, oh, this, they don't like it. You know, they don't want to, they don't care about it. You know, it just depends. Yep. Uh, but that's like, it could be something that you watch that's new. But no, I Ghostbusters is great. Um, I'm curious about the new one. I'm going to see how well it is, well, well, well it does, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. What's the subtitle for it? It's Ghostbusters Afterlife. Afterlife. That's right. I mean, it's got Paul Rudd. I like Paul Rudd. I mean, like, I don't think he's like he's all right. I always enjoy him in a movie. 
Yep. Um, Dan Aykroyd's crazy ass will be in it too. Oh boy, I wonder if he'll be drinking his what is it, liquor, vodka, crystal or? vodka. <laughs> it's purified using real Herkimer diamonds. <laughs> it's true. true. Oh boy. Anyways, oh. Um, well, Justin, this has been really an interesting start. Okay, we've gotten halfway through the '80s, and we've already talked about two Star Wars movies. Uh, some amazing examples of like film, like great films, and then also Evil Dead. <laughs> so, um, one last movie to shout out for 1984 before we go: The Neverending Story. Only because I, oh, I it's never, it's good. I, I, I wasn't like a huge fan of it. I like two, but I just, I just loved. I didn't even, yeah, there was like the Neverending Story continues like it, it shouldn't even have numbers they should just keep well going. i just knew the sequel more personally i just knew that before the original one i just i love the sequel so i, I only like the never-ending story because of the joke from the simpsons where um lionel hutz the lawyer uh homer uh gets kicked out of the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet and he takes it to a lawyer and the lawyer says like Mr. Simpson, this is the most important case I've had since my lawsuit against the lever- against the producers of the film The Neverending Story. Like, <laughs> like I just can't separate the two. Every time I hear it, I hear it being said by Lionel Hutz. So that's why it gets a little shout out. But anyways, this has been quite the uh, return to form here in a, in a nice, <laughs> thorough episode. Yeah, that long-winded episode. Where I think sure is. <laughs> Gas bags over here. But <laughs> hey, we got through the first half of the 80s, and we'll we'll get to the second half. Let's. I'm hoping that the movies of 85 to 89 will be uh, just as good. Mm-hmm. Empire's my favorite so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Justin. This has been fun. Make sure you check all of our Twitter handles and Facebook pages and YouTube channels. Like, subscribe, follow, share, all that lovely stuff. We're posting lots of stuff. More and more content. We have, we have, a, we have a Let's Play of Mega Man X5 up right now, so you should check oh that out. Oh my gosh, it's fun. I can't wait to get back into that. Oh, it's <laughs> been, I, I, I watched what we've recorded already, man. It's just so funny. It's so good. But... Like, what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> But next week we'll do next well next two weeks from now we'll be doing the part two of this lovely lovely journey. Thanks for joining us. This has been playing favorites. I'm Paul. I'm Justin. Bye bye. <laughs>